Hi there, my name is Gregor Adam Scott, and this is my game, Armored Commander, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. Uh, in this playthrough, I'm going to be playing Alpha 5.1, which adds a couple fixes and improvements to the re recently released uh, Alpha 5. So let's start a new campaign, name our tank, and let's begin the combat day, because on the first day of action, you are always called up for action. Now in Alpha 5.1, uh, instead of only a month of campaign time, uh, you can play through up until the end of January 1945. Um, unfortunately, you won't see the landscape change because weather effects such as snow have not yet been added, but at least it gives you a lot more time to try to build up your build up your tank um, and play through and see how many victory points you can actually accumulate. Another change that, that uh, has occurred is if you run into uh, a period in which the in which the division is refitting, you are uh, offered a random tank. Uh, the type of tank that you're offered um, is randomly generated based on what types of models of tanks were available during that period in the calendar. So as you go later um, through the calendar into late 1944 and into 1945, it becomes much more likely that you'll get the later um, more heavily armored and, hev and um, heavily armed um, Sherman tanks. But uh, just as before, when you start off, you're in a stock M4 Sherman with no loader hatch and no uh, additional equipment either. So let's begin and try to survive for a couple weeks, um, or at least if we do get our tank shot out from under us, try to keep the commander alive so that we can upgrade uh, and get a slightly better tank for later on. So let's set it up. Uh, I got lucky, so I have nine shells of the HCBI smoke producing ammo. So let's take them all, load a couple into the ready rack, Grab some white phosphorus, also for smoke, and uh, load the rest of the ammo. It's funny, but in most of the playthroughs, and this is probably be, probably because um, it's quite rare to run into the heavier tanks, and um, such as the Tiger and the King Tiger. And I should mention as well that there are, in addition to the standard um, advance scenario, which is all that's been added to Armored Commander at the moment, um, in, original, in the original Patton's Best board game, you also had battle and counterattack scenarios, um, which, especially the battle one, uh, the battle scenario is basically the same as advance, except you're always running into a lot more resistance, and it's much more likely that, um, for example, the units that you, that you run into are going to be, they can be in fortifications, or it's much more likely that they'll be ready and taking advantage of cover. So I think in that case, anyway, this is all to say that for the most part, I haven't used um, smoke ammo. Um, if I've laid down smoke, it's been through the open hatch with a smoke grenade, but I can well imagine um, if I'm uh, facing heavy resistance for the day, or later on when I add them fighting a battle or a counter attack scenario, that smoke can actually be very useful. But um, so far, I've been lucky and I haven't needed to use it too much. Also, the friendly forces usually do a pretty good job of uh, dropping smoke on enemies too. Um, so let's get started. So my plan for the day is to head up this road as much as possible, then probably hop over to the dirt road and make my way, either this one or this one, and make my way to the exit area. So far so good. Medium resistance to try to call artillery. Not able to. And a battle. Another change that I introduced in um, this alpha in 5.1, and I'll just let this run through, is the, the way that the sectors are laid out is slightly different. So um, before, because of the way, oh, now no, I'll have to change this as well, because of the way that the um, hexes and sectors overlapped, if a unit were to, in uh, some of these medium range hexes, there's a random chance as to whether it actually counted as being in the front, for example, or the front left. And this made a big difference because if they fire at you, um, the Sherman's uh, side armor um, is much less strong um, than its front armor. So if you're facing something like a tank or a self-propelled gun or an AT gun, you want it to be in your front arc. In 5.1 and, uh, and onward, the size of the front arc is slightly larger, so you can see that the front uh, here comprises uh, seven hexes, the side is only these hexes, and then the rear is quite limited. Um, so th the rear uh, sector are just these hexes here. And this sort of wavy wavy outline of, uh, of calculating exactly which hexes fall into which sectors more closely follows um, the way that ASL does it. And because Patton's Best originally did not use hexes, it just used big um, sectors, big, big sections of these concentric 
circles. So I feel that this is a good improvement. Um, uh, there are a lot of cases when it was it was quite troublesome with these units that were kind of sitting half in one sector, half in another, and you didn't know where the shot was going to come from. Now, no matter what, if you know where an enemy is, you know what it's going to count as. And in this case, all right, so I'm, I'm facing an SPG and a tank on either side of me. This is not an auspicious start um, to my campaign. So let's try to spot the tank. Hidden. I identified it. Stationary in woods. It's a Hetzer. Um, unfortunately, the Hetzer has quite strong front armor and it's in front facing. So the thing that I want to do now is try to reverse and let's toss a smoke grenade. So smoke grenade. I do like using smoke grenades. It's quite handy because having a smoke on, on top of your tank um, is helpful and the timing often works out well because um, you can time the disappearance of the smoke for it to happen before you when you actually want to stay, start making shots and uh, start trying to actually hit enemies. So gunner's not going to do anything. Let's change the gun load and get some AP shells in there. Driver's going to try to reverse to haul down and I'm going to leave his hatch open because um, that uh, I think you get a an, um, you get a, a negative modifier to uh, the movement roll if your driver is, is buttoned up. But we can button up the assistant driver because he's not going to do anything. So let's try that. AP didn't move far enough to affect enemy positions. It was smoke. Destroyed. Good. So I don't have to deal with the tank. I'm just left with this um, SPG and it's still in the woods and it's still front uh, facing. So let's do this. Um, doesn't really matter what the commander does because what I want to do is pivot the tank. He is ready to go. Yeah, you don't have to do anything, Commander. Just um, button up. And you can button up too, because pivoting the tank doesn't actually require um, a roll. And I'm not hauled down, so I don't have to worry about losing it. Uh, the point of this is to get the SPG into my front arc. There we go. Fires a friendly lead tank. No effect. And it was destroyed. Good. We survived. Um, light forces. I guess if I want to stay on the road and use the time bonus, I should check here. Um, check my tank. I didn't actually fire anything, so... Uh, but we can open these guys up. Getting ready for the next encounter. No resistance. Encounter AT gun. SPG. It's a lot of firepower so far. Alright, friendly tank destroyed. SPG moves away. Artillery fire. Luckily no effect on my tank. So what are we going to do? Um, let's try to spot the AT gun because it's closer. And ends up being hidden. Martyr 3. Very light armor. Let's do this. Um, I want to keep this AT gun in my front, so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the turret. You direct fire. Luckily I've still got AP from the last encounter. Rotate and fire gun. Load. Uh, button you guys up stop and none. And let's get the assistant driver to pass ammo. The downside of passing ammo is that he can't spot, but in this case, um, everything I can spot has been spotted, so he doesn't have, unless there's reinforcements that show up, there's not a whole lot else for the assistant driver to do. So let's keep him on pass ammo just in case I run out of shells in the ready rack, and I want to switch to general. Direct fire, fire away, four or less. Nope, didn't have a good chance. It didn't help that the target was moving, and I rotated my turret. Um, so it was it was unlikely and I missed and I didn't keep rate of fire. Sits there, friendly infantry. I uh, lost another infantry squad. Good, destroyed, destroyed. But I lost a total of one victory point because of friendly forces lost. Unfortunate. Let's keep going. Doo -doo. So I actually fired a shell, and let's toss it back in the ready rack. Ready for the next encounter. No resistance. Getting close to that exit area. I think I'm going to check the town. Good. No resistance. Good. And let's take this road. Battle. SPWPSW truck. Destroyed. Destroyed. Good. 
So all I have to do is sit here and hope that um, they don't get reinforcements. Good. Victory points, so how am I doing so far? 34 VP, not bad. Let's um, go through here. No resistance. I'm staying away from the woods because it's much more likely if you get into a battle in the woods that the enemy forces that pop up are going to be right next to you as opposed to open fields where it's more likely that by the time they um, by the time they spring their ambush or by the time you spot them and start to attack they'll be at, at medium or long range. Artillery them. No dice. Battle. So what do we got? Truck. SPG. Light weapons. All right. So as always, the SPG is really the only threat. Truck runs away, SPG sits there. Fires to no effect. And um, now in every in every round, there's always a random events phase. Um, if the enemy uh, springs an ambush on you, first thing that happens is they get a round of attack. Next thing that happens is that there's random ev events, and then it happens to you. One of the random events is 15 minutes of time has passed. So this in, in this way, a lot of battles, some battles can last 15 minutes of real time, even though they might take many turns. Other battles will last longer. It's just um, it's just a matter of luck whether this whether this event, this random event, actually gets triggered. Well, that was unlikely, unlu unlucky. I didn't spot the SPG. Um, so let's. I'm stopped at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot because pivoting will put this SVG in my front and it'll give me movements, uh, moving status, which makes it harder for him to hit me. And you will do none, so you get an extra um, spotting chance. Load, don't fire the main gun, and you can do nothing. And we'll close this hatch because the only thing I can spot is gonna be only in one sector. I don't need to spot all around. So, have a tank done. No effect, good. Also good. Smoke. Another 15, oh, this is taking a while. All right, so I spotted the SPG, but I didn't identify it. That's okay, I can still attack it. Um, it might be um, it might be very heavily armored. I don't actually have a chance to damage it, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway, so. Commander's gonna pop out of his hatch. Fire the main gun, fire the main gun, load, stop. Pass ammo just in case. So we're firing AP from the ready rack. Good to go. Eight or less. Missed. Didn't maintain rate of fire. And the SPG moves, which means I lose um, acquired target. And SPG's hidden. Oh, this is... This guy's quite cagey. None. Uh, let's get the ready rack stocked with more AP. Get him in my front arc. Load it up. Now we've got five AP shells in the ready rack. That should be enough for anything. Hidden. If he's hidden, either he has to move or I have to move before that status can be changed. So let's try to reverse the hull down. If I were to go forward and I was successful, what would happen is he would shift all the way to behind me, um, which is never a good place to have an enemy SPG. And we'll direct movement and open them up and see if we can move. Nope, failed the roll, and it was destroyed anyway, so I got lucky. Let's keep moving up. Artillery, no dice, battle. So three units, a tank, a tank, and machine gun. And they get first attack, so let's see what happens. Tank moves around. Tank moves closer, which takes it past me. Great, so from having two tanks in the same sector, now they're on either side of me. Um, let's try to spot this one. Panzer IV. Alright, that's not too bad. It's the weakest um, tank that I could have run into, so I was fairly lucky. Um, the question is, what do I do? So he's in the woods. They both have front facing. Um, eventually on the unit info, you'll be able to see a display with exactly what kind of armor they have. Um, I think the Panzer IV is pretty much uh, comparable to a, uh, I think to, to a later Sherman. I might even be uh, more lightly armored at this point than they are. So um, I'm going to try to do the same thing as I was doing at the end of the last um, encounter, which is reverse to hull down. 
and still have AP loaded. Let's try it out. Nope. Panzer IV fires, no effect. Got lucky. MG team's just running around. Tank destroyed, destroyed. Oh, battle group has moved into a minefield. Unfortunately, at this point, I'm moving, which means I'm subject to attack. Luckily, I didn't trigger any mines, so that's okay. Um, he's already spotted and identified, so it doesn't really matter. And it's front facing, but there's nobody left, so let's just pivot. And hope he doesn't move. And he moved, of course. Spot over here. Spotted. No, I already identified him, so I don't need to do that twice. Let's just fire. I want to take this guy out. He's in my side armor, but... What the heck, I'm feeling lucky. Button up. Rotate. Direct fire AP. Go! Missed, of course. Fires at me! Oh, hit on the side. I'm dead. Knocked out. Oh! <laughs> There's not a there's not a big chance of your tank exploding, but there is a chance, and in this case, that's it. I got cocky, I wanted to take this guy out, I missed, he fired back, and that's it. My tank is destroyed, and my campaign has come to an end. And that's it. I it should have it should have told me that it ended, but instead it crashed. Um which is which is which is you know, which, which is still pretty reflective of, of my feelings on this. So thanks again for watching. I'll keep working on Alpha uh, 5.1 and uh, hope to record another video soon. Thanks again.